Skull. It's time for Stardom Center with Michael F. Florio, who pins a column with this name every week. And this is the final one, Mike, the final one on this show as we go over the starts and the sits, starting with the quarterbacks. And yes, as per that cringy, just like him video, Kirk Cousins starting or sitting him against Green Bay. Imagine after that video, I was like, no, nah, we're, we're sitting Kirk Cousins. Come on, that gives it away. But we are starting Kirk Cousins this week against the Packers. Look, Kirk Cousins has been playing really, really well as of late. He's top 24 fantasy points in three straight. In those three games, he's averaging 395 passing yards per game and has nine touchdowns. Plus, he went for 19 against the Packers earlier this season. You see there, he's got that number three of his last four. Road game, big game, I don't care what narrative you want to give me, he's playing far too well at a position that has just suddenly become very thin. Yeah, he's got, he's got a good player to throw to as well. It doesn't matter uh, what time the game starts. Perhaps. Jefferson should be an MVP candidate. Facts. We're not That's not today, but I just felt like so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I was freeze framing. <laughs> uh, Brock Purdy against the Raiders, who were going through some things. You, you rocking with Brock? Oh, we're rocking with Brock. The Brock pod, as Marcus calls him. Look, he is one of the top streaming options of the week, in my opinion. In his three starts, he's been averaging 18 fantasy points per game. His low is 16, so he brings a high floor, a reliable floor. And I always say, like, trusting him is trusting Shanahan and his playmakers, but I think Brock Purdy has just played well enough where he has earned our trust now. Plus, the Raiders, who are going through some things, they've allowed the six most fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. Again, if you're streaming, Purdy is one of the best options out there this year. All right, Brock Purdy going up against the defense that has been rather forgiving. Geno Smith is playing the Jets. Are we starting Geno? A revenge game, but uh, we are sitting uh, Geno Smith. Look, it's nothing against you, Geno. You have been great. You deserve to be a pro bowler. I, all the credit goes to you, but the matchup against the Jets is so tough. They've allowed just 14.4 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks and the fewest passing touchdowns in the NFL. Plus, Smith is averaging less than 14 fantasy points per game in his last two. Look, you're not sitting Geno Smith for anyone, but it's a good streaming week. There's guys like Goff, Daniel Jones, Brock Purdy, Mike White. You could get away from Geno Smith this week. Ah, it hurts. That hurts me because I know Geno has a bar. Like he, it's it's coming. If he wins, he's gonna he's gonna drop another one that he's been uh, waiting. I'm waiting, waiting for that now for, for a long time. Let's get some wideouts. Jerry Judy in a gate where they could need to throw the ball against Kansas City. He's starting. We're starting. Jerry Judy. Look, the last time he played the Chiefs, he kind of went berserk on the field and then caught three touchdowns in a game he maybe should have been ejected from, but he has been far too productive right now to get away from. Last week, 10 targets, 6 catches, 117 yards, finished as a top 15 wide receiver. He's been averaging 22 fantasy points per game in his last three weeks. The Chiefs have given up the 6 most fantasy points to receivers. He had a good, great game against them last time. He's not going to duplicate it, but safe bet that they're chasing points, which is going to lead to a lot of volume for Jerry Judy. Yeah, and volume is something we like, especially in the championship round. Let's go over to a guy who's got plenty through his career, not as much this season, Deontay against the Ravens. Is he a start? Uh, he's a sit. Because look, if you want to put a positive spin on things, he had his best game with Kenny Pickett last week when he scored 11.4 fantasy points. Yeah, it's his best game, though, at 11.4 fantasy points. Every game with Mitchell Trubisky has been better. Um, he has not topped 85 yards in six of his last seven games against the Ravens. Plus, the Ravens have allowed just one touchdown to a receiver in the last month. That's still one more touchdown than Deontay Johnson has on the season. All right, so we're, we're, we know we're starting Justin Jefferson. You said at the top of the show that we were going to start Kirk Cousins. Are, are we starting Adam Thielen against the Packers? I'm going to get my school we, ready. We are not. I'm sorry. We're, we're sitting Adam Thielen. He, the floor is just far too low to start in a championship game. In his last two games combined, he has four catches for 47 yards. He hasn't topped 85 yards in 22 straight games. That is a season and like a third. Um, and then there's lots of uh, target competition there with Jefferson and Hawkinson. Just too low of a floor against the Packers defense been pretty tough against receivers lately. Okay, so we got more running backs as well as tight ends coming up with Mr. Florio, the final start him, sit him, but let's get a more broad view now with Marcus and Rank. You know, if Geno Smith wins this week, it'll be revenge of the Smith. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. championship <laughs> caliber moves are made by championship winners, and so sometimes, though, you need a little bit of a strategy session to help you get through. So, Rank, we got a couple of ideas here for people that they should think about this week. What sort of strategy suggestions do you have? Well, when I filled this out in the homework on Tuesday afternoon, saying things like, start Tyler Algier, uh, seemed a little risky. Now it's kind of a necessity with the news about Derrick Henry and things like that. But what I was thinking about was that if you have a player like Tyler Algier,
who's been outperforming a lot of guys that you might be relying on. I was thinking more along the lines of like the Raheem Mostert types, like making that kind of move. Because I think a lot of people, you know, when they're looking at their fantasy rosters, they're not looking at the Falcons and being like, I got to start one of these guys. As a matter of fact, one of their guys might have been the dude who kept you out of the fantasy playoffs in a lot of instances. But I think like, you know what? Sometimes you just got to look and see who's productive, who's been playing very well and go with that guy. But make sure it's been over an extended period of time because far too often you might be tempted to chase the fantasy points where you see a one week outlier and be like, oh, I'm going to start that guy because he was awesome last week, not realizing that the previous four weeks he was not good. And so do not chase the fantasy. But I don't think Cam Akers is it's definitely, I don't think that's a great example because I think that he's going up against the Chargers. You can play him. Um, but I think there's some other guys out there. Like be, be mindful. Like Isaiah Hodgins has been playing very well over the last couple of years. I know that everybody this week is going to pick up the Giants defense. That scares me. The only thing is, is that they've played well. Like they have been getting to the quarterback, but it's always those things like, I don't know, make sure it's sustainable. Like don't go for the flavor of the week, the flavor of the month, fine, but not flavor of the week. That makes sense. No, it makes absolute sense. I mean, for me, I would say one of the things you don't want to do is really lean heavily on players on teams with nothing to play for. Sometimes you can't get away from them, but I look at guys like say in Arizona where the Cardinals are out of things. DeAndre Hopkins now is kind of dealing with some quarterbacks that are a little bit lesser than when you have Kyler Murray there. James Conner, another guy in a situation where if things start to go sideways for Arizona, they very well may just kind of pull these guys off the field, start to get some of their younger players in there. You see it, for instance, with Justin Fields. Do the Bears ask him maybe to run a little bit less just to preserve himself going into the offseason? We've already seen the Raiders decide to pull the plug on Derek Carr for the rest of the season. So just beware when you have teams that really don't have a whole lot to offer and what they may uh, be doing with some of their guys. But on the other side, if you've got guys who have been stars all year long, don't overthink it, right? You hear Rank talk about maybe using guys like Tyler Algier, and that's great if you're looking at some sort of middling guys on your roster. But for instance, look, you've got Patrick Mahomes this week. He's going against the Denver Broncos. And on paper, this matchup is as difficult as they come. Don't sit there during the week and say, man, I wonder would it be a little bit better if maybe I tried Jared Goff. No. Don't do that. No. Patrick Mahomes is the Don't reason worry, I'm good. you probably got to this situation in the first place. Don't let some sort of matchup based situations make you think that you got to go away from him and then leave yourself spending all off season just uh, salty and mad because you didn't you didn't get it done when it was right there in front of you. That's all we got, Patrick. What do you got? Uh, thank you, guys. When we come back, we're spotlighting the running backs that have carried us to this point in the season. Who's got one more big week in them and who might be slowing down as we reach the promised land? Our predictions for Championship Sunday next on Fantasy Live. All right, for the final time this season, it is the last start of Cinema. We're going to be doing the running back and tight end position. And one of the biggest uh, conundrums this week, Jerk McKinnon, what are we doing with him against the Denver Broncos? I'm starting him everywhere that I have him. And in the championship game that I'm in, I have to play the person who picked him up after I cut him. That's oh, pain. But he last week was a floor game. He still gave you around 13 fantasy points. Denver is in the top 12 in fantasy points allowed to running backs, and he exploded against them in week 14. I'm not telling you he's going to give you 32 fantasy points again, but I think his usage is by design as the Broncos' secondary is so tough that it's just easy for Patrick Mahomes to dump it off to McKinnon. Like that. I also like it if you got Patrick Mahomes so he can dump off the ball. One player who's been struggling over the last couple of weeks, Nick Chubb. I mean, if we've limped into, I've done this. I've somehow made it to a championship with Nick Chubb. What are we doing with him, though? Let's get spicy. Sit, uh, Nick Chubb. I know it's crazy to say. It's crazy, but he has averaged just 9.4 fantasy points per game with Deshaun Watson. That's 1.8 targets per game. All of his production's coming on the ground. He hasn't scored a touchdown. The floor has been low, the ceiling low as well. The commanders have allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points to running backs. Look, you're not sitting him for like some guy you just picked up off the waiver wire, but if you have another option that you like, you could get away from Chubb. Tyler Algier. That's a, that's a spicy one that I would strongly consider. All right. What about Najee Harris, though? Uh, another guy that I'll, I'm sure a lot of people drafted early. Hasn't been playing well. 
I, I'm gonna say oh. sit him. Look, I know, again, a little bit of spice here, but Najee Harris has been very up and down this season. The Ravens, though, have allowed the third fewest rushing yards per game, and they're in the bottom 10 in fantasy points allowed. Harris had just 50 yards the last time he played them. A touchdown kind of helped him break double figures, but if he doesn't score, you could be looking at single digits this week. Man, a rough scene if he drafted Nick Chubb and Najee Harris, and oh, now I see why you asked me to do this segment. So I can sit here and have him say bad things about Cole Komet for two minutes. I said bad thing. things the last couple of weeks about Cole Komet. We're starting him ah! right now against the Detroit Lions. Look, the only reason I had him as a sit was because he had some couple of tough matchups, but the Lions are anything but. They've allowed the six most fantasy points per game to tight ends, and I think there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game. And even if Justin Fields doesn't run, probably means more throwing. Cole Komet likely going to be his top target. Love Cole Komet this week. Uh, what about Shane Zilstra? That helps no one all start. Three <laughs> touchdowns last week. We got to be starting him against you guys hate the Bears, so I'm sure you're starting him. No, we're sitting. Ah, and it's exactly, sit down. it's exactly what Rank said at the start of the show. Don't chase points. He had three touchdowns last week. He didn't have any the whole season. He had more targets last week than he did the entire season. So, yeah, don't chase the points with Shane Zel Zelstra. And just a big thank you to everyone who read the article, watched the segment this week. I, I really appreciate it. Well, for the entirety of the year, I don't That's think right. a lot of you understand how much work goes in to doing this column. You gotta start writing it Sunday afternoon while games are still going on, trying to figure up matchups, and he's been killing it all year. So thank you thank for you. all of your hard work, and thanks to everybody who's been following along. Marcus, take it away. I will do that indeed. You know, over the last few weeks, Devontae Adams has been on the front seat of the struggle bus. Uh -oh. Will he right the ship, or I guess the bus? I don't know, whenever it matters most, Patrick has his fantasy forecast coming up next.